I'd like to start with one sentence, and it's this. You have the ability to our future. If you were suddenly dropped off in a country like Taiwan right now, the language that I just spoke is the language you would be surrounded by. If you can't speak Mandarin, imagine the shock and the sudden isolation you would feel from not being able to communicate or understand anymore. Nowadays, when you don't understand something, what do we do? Well, most often, we'll Google it. In other words, we turn to technology and we rely on it to guide us and to translate these foreign concepts from words we don't understand into words that we do. Picture yourself depending on this translation technology and living a life in Taiwan. Sure, you'll be able to survive, but the big question is, will you be able to thrive? Will you be able to find yourself a decent job Feel like an involved member of the community? Probably not. As humans, we were born curious, having the capacity for higher-order thinking and a craving to know and to understand everything around us is a signature of our race as a whole. And for this reason, learning exists. This is why you would probably start learning Mandarin as soon as you realized you were stuck in Taiwan. Languages and literacy give us intellectual freedom, a life of enrichment and independence. It's a form of empowerment, and this is supported not only by a philosophical point of view, but a statistical one as well. Research shows that people who lack the ability to read and to write actually experience over 11% more anxiety. In addition. Loneliness is shown to be experienced more by over 17 percent. Physical health is shown to decrease by almost 20 percent, and happiness by 11 percent. Now, the ability to speak, read, write, and understand also determines whether or not one can fit in to today's workforce. Currently, the jobs that we have need people with literacy skills. This is very different from 100 years ago, where the vast majority of jobs looked like this, requiring more physical skill or manual labor. But today, with technology becoming more and more advanced, our jobs are beginning to look like this, which requires more mental effort instead of physical effort. According to Literacy Nova Scotia. 70% of Canadian jobs right now require at least college-level reading skills. In addition, the Literacy Project states that 75% of illiterate individuals are on government assistance. So, as we can see, literacy is such an undeniably crucial skill to have, and determines whether or not we can thrive in today's society. Now. I want to move on and talk about a more niche aspect of literacy, and that is Braille. Braille is a form of written word where characters are represented by patterns of raised dots, which are read at the fingertips. If you are blind, Braille is the only form of literacy that's available to you. And we have already seen the importance of literacy. It is crystal clear. So why is it that only one in ten visually impaired Canadians can read Braille? In fact, these numbers are even lower in other countries. Well, it all comes down to one thing, and that is education. The tactile medium of Braille makes it a unique and hard skill to learn. In addition, the current market solu solutions we have. Targeting Braille education are not only scarce, but cost individuals thousands and thousands of dollars, while also not allowing people to self-teach themselves or self-learn. And so, all of these factors combined together causes inaccessibility. And what inaccessible education does is cause these low Braille literacy rates. So, 
how do we fix this? This was a question I kept asking myself and those around me. Seeing a problem, we can't just sit back and do nothing about it. Well, the goal is to try to reverse these problematic root factors, which means to transform high costs into low costs, dependence into independence, and ultimately, inaccessibility into accessibility. After a year of ideation, prototyping, experimentation, and a lot of obstacles to overcome, my team and I developed a solution that's functional and aims to solve this problem. Costing less than $25 to produce, this open source device can effectively teach visually impaired individuals in a way that minimizes costs while maximizing independence. The goal here is to make Braille education as accessible as it can be. Through this project and the Canada-wide science fair, I learned a very important lesson, and it's this. Just because something is niche doesn't mean that it's unimportant. Right now, less than 4% of our world population is blind. Isolating that number, it seems like a pretty small portion, and having a small demographic makes the problem seem even minor. But at the science fair, I had the opportunity to speak with people from all across the country and hear about their direct experiences with Braille education. From family members who are undergoing the transition from sight to blindness, all the way to people who work with children with disability, including blindness, this opened my eyes to the real impact that Braille education has in people's lives in this world. And so the key takeaway is that although a demographic might be small and the problem might be niche, it's the impact, the incredibly tremendous impact that matters. And that's what makes it important. Now, if a couple of high school students can work together on a project like this, just one single project with one common goal aimed to solve one problem, Imagine what we could all do if we decided to work together and fill in the gaps of our education system. And by education, I don't mean just literacy alone. It expands beyond that. Learning happens in so many ways, ways that our society hasn't all addressed. And the thing is, everybody's unique. This is a common phrase, and I'm sure you've heard it over and over before, but everybody's unique. What that means is you've probably been exposed to some sort of problem somewhere in your life that maybe those around you haven't experienced. And this could be related to education. These facets of learning are waiting to be discovered, waiting for the innovative and creative thoughts that you have to be transformed from just simple imagination into real world solutions. If everybody harnessed their unique experiences, passions, and skills to address and tackle these issues, we would be one step closer to a better world of learning. And so, before I conclude, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. First, what problems do you see? This could be an issue you encounter either directly or indirectly within your everyday life. It could be an aspect of our education system or a way of learning that's lacking attention. Secondly, what needs to be changed? This refers to those root problematic factors that have to be addressed in order for a real result to actually occur. And lastly, most importantly, ask yourself, how can I help change this? Now that part is up to you. Like I said in the beginning, ni yo nen li, xing wo men de wei lai. It means you have the power to reinvent our future. Let's do this one niche at a time. Thank you.